Hey everyone, how's it going? If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you'll know that a lot of my projects involve high RPM, which sometimes ends up in failed bearings, or well, eventually will end up in failed bearings because I'm usually spinning them either at the maximum or far beyond the maximum rated RPM. This leaves me with two options. One, find expensive ceramic bearings and introduce a better lubrication system, or two, come up with my own bearing system that I can produce in-house and don't have to worry about spending a lot of money on high-speed bearings. In order to properly make this decision, I decided to do some testing, which leads me to this 3D printed journal bearing. How this is going to work is I made a bearing supported in a larger cavity with a oil or lubricant feed from the top that goes directly into the bearing center with the lubricant then leaking out of the ends of the bearing or around the shaft and going down into the bottom of the cavity and then leaking out through the drain port. For material for all of this I decided to use PETG for the housing. Really the housing material isn't that important and I also decided to go with nylon considering I'm trying to make this last as long as possible and nylon is probably the best option for any plastic material for this application. This design will also use a nylon thrust washer, which is basically just a big fat nylon washer attached to the shaft, fit with just enough clearance between the inner part of the bearing and the outer end cap. This will also double as a seal of sorts. It's referred to as an oil slinger, and as the lubricant comes out of the end of the shaft, it is flung out to the outer side of the, the cavity as opposed to following the shaft and leaking out the shaft exit or I imagine it would be called gl a gland. For ease of production on my test unit, I only went with one slinger and one thrust bearing. However, in practice, I would prefer to use two, one on either shaft and by each gland, so that way there is no leakage out either end. Before I get into the testing of the journal bearing, I'm going to redo some of the tests from the previous video with the proper direction of impeller just to see what sort of difference and quantify how bad the other impeller really was in comparison. Which the comparison was immediately obvious. Between the sound and much higher RPM potential on the generator, I'm guessing I'm getting another five to 6,000 RPM. And it seems to have a lot faster start with a lot more torque, which is useful. At this sort of RPM, that poor little stepper motor is taking a beating and it's very hot, so I'm gonna cut this short. But I noticed a little bit of extra vibration and looseness while pulling it apart, so I just wanted to see how it run freewheel which led me to the problem and the reason why I developed this journal bearing in the first place. I am set up outside because lubricant's probably gonna end up everywhere and for lubricant I'm going to use just soapy water because it's probably gonna end up everywhere. Initially things spin up well, but that doesn't last too long before it stalls. I try and give it another spin and the turbine runs right off the shaft. Nothing a little bit of super glue can't fix. After the glue is applied, I try and restart it and it seems like something had picked up that's probably why the impeller came off the shaft, because it, the shaft stopped spinning. However, it still spins rather easily, so I take a drill and just free it up a little bit by spinning it for a while. This fixed most of the issues, and it seems to be running good again, for a little bit. You can see that some of the air from the vacuum is leaking into the housing, because the water going in is pretty clean, and the water coming out is basically foam. This is standard for a turbocharger, they're really not sealed that well. Seals at this kind of speed tend to break down very quickly, which is why they're normally equipped with the type of dynamic seals. Now 
Now I didn't catch it on camera, but it stalled again. It seems somewhere that the shaft is a little bit too tight. And if I had to guess, it's the hole right behind the impeller because there's not going to be a lot of lubrication in there. So if it is really tight and it's rubbing, it's going to generate a lot of heat. Pile up some plastic and eventually seize up. As you probably noticed earlier that there's a spray coming out of the turbine, this is from the soapy water leaking through. I figured this was going to happen because of the lack of slinger on that end. And that's why I'm using soapy water, so it doesn't really matter. I decided to stick the end cone on just to see if it would change anything, which it, so its effect was just because I had the wrong turbine in there. However, with the soapy water leaking just slightly around the outside of it, I end up making bubbles. So it ran for a little while and then failed again. All in all, I ran it for about 30 minutes, however that involved about 6 different seizing situations and I had to free it up twice with the drill. So I'm going to end up taking it apart and I'm going to enlarge the hole at the back of the housing. This should eliminate any rubbing as everything else is lubricated, however it will definitely increase the leakage. After adding clearance for the shaft, I'm back outside to do some more testing. Unfortunately, it got dark on me, so some of the footage gets a little bit rough here, but bear with me. Overall, I ended up running it for about an hour with no significant failure after this, although, like I said, with much more leakage. However, that should be easy enough to solve with a slinger on both sides of the housing. This seems to be a decent test and has given me lots of information. I ended up moving the water dish upwards just to see if the higher pressure would increase or decrease the issues. All that it seemed to do in this case was to add to the leakage. So I eventually moved it back down to where it started. Otherwise with no significant issues and not a huge amount of wear, I have the basic design cues here to improve on this and possibly use it in further application. The one idea I have for this is to put it on the output side of my other working supercharger that I have on the Honda, redesigning the whole gearbox to include a gear pump which would supply the oil pressure to the journal bearing and everything would be self-contained and drained back into an oil pan inside the gearbox. The input shafts on this would probably still just be normal bearings because I haven't had any issue at the lower RPM, it's just at higher RPM between heat generation and cheap Chinese bearings failing. Either way, I know this feels like it's slightly off topic from my normal projects, however I gained a lot of valuable information here that I can use to further those projects. When it comes to the supercharger, I seem to have the basic principle down and I really need to make improvements 
so that I can, you know, run it a little longer with it out, without it falling apart and push it a little faster without the risk of things failing abruptly and disintegrating. At any rate, that's all I got for you guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it wasn't too boring for you. If you're still here at this point, I can't imagine it was that boring. Well, anyways, thank you guys and have a good one.